Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to create a scrolling background that we can use with our Flappy Bird game. In the last video, I created a sprite which I'm going to upload to our project. Once the sprite has been loaded, it can be edited in the Costumes tab. We first need to convert the sprite to a vector. This will give us more control when we try to edit it. We can easily increase the size by dragging the dots on the shape's border. We can also reposition it anywhere on the screen. The cross here at the center of the object represents the origin point. It has coordinates of 0, 0. If you are on a laptop or desktop, the arrow keys can be used to move the sprite up and down or left and right. The Scratch user interface is very basic. We can use a grid to help us position the sprite on the screen. So here I'm going to drag the sprite upwards so that the space is in the center of the screen. This is going to be my first costume. For the second costume, we can move the space to the top of the screen. This part gets tricky because if your sprite is too small, there will be a space between your sprite and the bottom of the screen. Create the third costume by creating another duplicate and moving the space to the bottom of the screen. Return to the Code tab. Make sure the sprite is selected. We need to grab an event block. We can use the one that has the green flag which will execute all connected scripts when the flag is clicked. We need a starting position for the sprite. In Flappy Bird, we start seeing the pipes on the right side of the screen. We can set the X position to be 240. This value depends on the size of your sprite. If your pipes are wider, this value may be different. When the game starts, the first pipe needs to be hidden to make the game more difficult for the player. We can hide the sprite using a hide block. Then we can wait for one second and then show it using a show block. The sprite needs to move across the screen from right to left. This means that the X value is going to become more and more negative. We can probably use a forever control loop, but as I said before, that is a bad practice. So we can use a repeat until loop, which will run until a condition is met. If we change X by a negative value such as minus two, the sprite should move across the screen. The next thing we need to do is randomly select a costume. The space between the two pipes could be at the top, the middle, or the bottom. The player should not know where it will be. We first need to grab a switch costume block. Our sprite has three costumes and each costume has a number. We would need a random number between 1 and 3 inclusive to pick a random costume. We can do this with the pick random operator which will fit nicely in the switch costume block. We want the sprite to disappear when it reaches the left side of the screen. In the repeat until block, we can use the condition 
x position equal to minus 250. Once that condition is met, we can hide the sprite. If we run this, our sprite should disappear when it reaches the left side of the screen. Currently, there is only one sprite that scrolls across the screen. We need to make a clone of the current sprite. At the bottom of the control section, there is a block that allows us to create a clone of the current sprite. We want to create the clone when the current sprite has an x value of 0. We need an if then control block. If the x position is equal to 0, then we want to clone the sprite. You won't immediately see the clone because it is floating around in cyberspace. In order to manipulate this clone, we need a when I start as a clone block. We want the clone to behave the same way as the original so that we can duplicate the code. We wouldn't need to hide the clone in the beginning from the player because by then the game would have already started. This clone is going to do everything that the original does. It will start at the X position of 240, select a random costume, it will move across the screen from right to left. If the X position is zero, the clone will clone itself and the process will start again. If I run the script, when the sprite reaches an X position of zero, it will create a clone at the starting position. When the clone reaches zero, it will clone itself and the process will start again. Now let's add a backdrop. Select the backdrop in the bottom right corner and let's remove the one that is there. We can add a backdrop by clicking the icon in the bottom left corner and let's add a colorful city. Currently, the backdrop is a bitmap and I'm going to convert it to a vector. This way I can decrease the size of the city and increase the size of the sky by using the rectangle tool. If I draw a rectangle above the city and make it the same color as the sky, it looks as though the sky is much bigger. This brings us one step closer to completing our Flappy Bird clone. This also brings us to the end of this tutorial on Scratch. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up, and if you would like to see more videos on Scratch, please subscribe.